Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call the reconvene South Carolina Libertarian Party convention for the purpose of nominating candidates and selecting our final delegates to Orlando. I am Stuart Plug. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the state party chairman. And uh, it's funny, this is the first time I ever banged the gavel down on the convention as the chairman versus. <laughs> All right, first order of business is a delegate report. I'll ask our secretary to report on delegates. <coughs> We've had 15 delegates sign in. That makes 50% our quorum eight, 67 or two thirds, 10, and 75, 12. We've had requests to add seven delegates. Had requests to add seven delegates, which uh, these are from organized counties? Organized counties. All right. Now, there is some slight confusion on that procedure. Our bylaws say that we vote on it. State law says that the delegations can add to them. So I'm not sure which procedure should we go <coughs> under, Mr. Secretary. Our bylaws require that the delegates on the floor by two thirds majority add delegates. Right. Okay, and you said there's 15. Do they have voting sticks or do we need to do voting sticks this time? No voting sticks this time. All right, you're on your honor. If you were a delegate in November, you're a delegate. You get. You've already got. Envelope. You've got your envelope. All right. You waved your envelope. And you said two thirds is how many on this? Ten. All right. All right. Yes, it is ten. All right. We have. Uh, do we need to name who they are in the counties, or how? How would you like to do it? By county, by person? Uh, by county, please. Okay. By county, Spartanburg County. We have three requests: Bill Bledsoe, Jack Robinson, and David Robinson. Who? No, I didn't get that one. Did you sign in the, uh, the sheet? No, I did not. I'm sorry. Well, no, you wouldn't remember. I tried to ask about what to do, and I was told not that they weren't to sign on the sheet yet. No, they're, they're signed in. They just don't get voting, voting information. If you could please. All right, while she's doing that, you want to go yeah. to the next county? We'll, we'll skip yeah. to the next county. Put, put your name and address on there. All right, uh, Charleston County. Michael Greer. Please stand up. No. Rich, just raise your hand. Oh, raise your hand. Rich Piotrowski. Yep. Ellen Blickman. Right. And Mark Timms. Okay. Right? Four from Charleston County. Okay. Yeah, I did not realize I was signing in to be a delegate. I thought I was just signing in. So. You wish to withdraw? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Right, so and, and you're Michael, right? Yes, <laughs> I'll learn you sooner or later. So that would be a total of six delegates. Now I haven't checked. Uh, she is a member. She signed the pledge. Yes, yeah, she is. She okay. Signed. All right. You verify that. All right. She's our county treasurer. Okay. Just asking. Okay. Got to ask. All right. So we have a. Uh, we are at, we are at Charleston. Three potential delegates. Mm -hmm. uh, minus Michael Greer. That's the other three are, are the same. Mark Tams, uh, Ellen Blickman, and Rich Petrowski. Right. Oh, so you want to, we want to vote by vote by county. All right. All those in favor of adding the delegates from Charleston County, signify by raising your envelope. All right. I clearly see more than two thirds. Okay. Means they are delegates. You get a count. I need to count. You number thirteen. Oh, uh, I, I I saw two thirds. Two thirds. I saw. I definitely saw two thirds. I can count to ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Spartanburg delegation. Spartanburg delegation. Signified Leanne by. Leanne Reynolds uh, was the addition. Is Bill Bledsoe, Jack Robinson, and David Robinson. All right. Signified by raising your envelopes. Alright, I count 10. Actually, 11 this time. Alright, do we have any more? Okay, so how many do we add? Lost one, add one, so that stays seven. Still seven. It's 22, right? Mm hmm. Okay. 
calculate the penny nipples? So if it's a 12, plus so one is 12. Someone we can stay with the same form for the whole boat. Or is that the best the whole boat? What's that? Is that all the, all the additions? It's all the additions, yeah. So 50 cent, 50 cent plus one is 12. Hmm? So that's the only request I had? I emailed you. <coughs> is she here? She's not here. Okay. If she shows up, then we, then we, go, okay. then we can address that issue. Uh, 15, excuse me. Two thirds, 15. And 17 on 75 percent, which I don't think we'll, think we'll have that vote today. I'm sorry, what was two thirds? Two thirds is 15. Quorum is 12. Okay. And I will get your paperwork to you in just a moment here. And three fourths is 17. All right. Uh, the procedure for operating a convention in South Carolina is a little bit strange. We actually have. Two roles, the party chairman and the convention chair. And the convention chair that was elected in November was unable to attend because of a prior engagement that he could not get away from. So the next order of business is to elect the convention chairman. The floor is now open for nominations for convention chairman. Who is convention chairman? Yes, sir. We need to nominate Stuart. Okay. We have a second? Second. All right. Do we have any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Obviously, I'm up against NOTA. So all those in favor of me signify by raising your envelope. All those in favor of NOTA, which means it's the end of the day we have no candidates. Okay, didn't see any of those. We're getting down some. All right. Okay. We're actually ahead of the schedule. This is wonderful. Hi, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. We allow these ballots to be passed out to these new delegates. All right. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules in order to, to and address a bylaws issue. Thank you. This vote requires two thirds to suspend the rules to entertain a change to the bylaws. All those in favor, please signify by raising your envelope. All right. You're going to have to count, Mr. Secretary. All right, I see almost everybody. Okay, so we have suspended the rules to entertain. Change the bylaws. Yeah. Are you going to defer to the vice chair to read the change since you made the motion? Yes, sir. He has it written. You care to read this? Thank you. you have it already written. And explain what it's for. The bylaws that we are proposing to change is adding to the very end of the current paragraph for section 8, end of the very first paragraph, and it reads as if a county does not execute a proxy. Their executive committee men may attend by electronic means and may vote but not count the quorum with the approval of the chair and the secretary. The purpose of this is so that the executive committee men, if they cannot send someone down to Columbia, may show up and vote during the committee sessions via video teleconference from where their, from where their home is with the approval of both the chairman and the secretary. This is our anti-flu virus amendment because several of us caught the flu a couple months ago because a committeeman 
did his duty and showed up, and then all the rest of us got sick. I would much rather have seen him over a telecom. And to specify terms, quorum is how many people it takes to for the meeting to be official. For a meeting to be official, you need so many numbers that you to physically be present. Which is five. So, which is five. So this incentivizes people to show up if you can, but if you can't, in emergency cases, you can, with your approval, talk to a vehicle conference via Skype or something like that, 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 that. We don't want meetings to be all via teleconference. We want people here, but we don't want to exclude them from being able to vote if flu happens and emergency comes up, that type of thing. So the executive committee would vote whether to include that person? No. No. It would, he, he has already set up the executive committee man from the okay. county. It's only him. He, I'm not the county chairman, not anyone else. The executive committee man can be the person coming in over video teleconference prior to by the chairman, whoever is the chairman, and the secretary. Right. So the they secretary can count any yes. votes, and right. the chairman so that somebody who eventually tries to it never show up. As it stands, and I'll give you an example of myself as well, uh, I was in the military with the National Guard. They tend to, you know, we'll have their drill weekend at the same time we had our meetings. I was able to participate and ask questions, but I couldn't vote because I wasn't physically there. It gives people situations where they can't help but not be there, the ability to vote in emergency situations. This is not for all the time. This is not for every meeting. This is only for in a case-by-case -case basis. Would anyone like to speak against it? What, do we second it? No. Okay. Oh, oh. Has it been seconded? No. All right. Second. Sorry. We got a second. Would anyone like to speak against the change? I'd like to speak forward. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not against the whole change altogether, but I have a, an issue with one item in there. You say that this person attending remotely would not count toward quorum. I'd like to propose that your, the interests of the party are better served if they do count toward quorum. I'll tell you why. Because I know we've had issues in the past where not enough people showed up and we've had to cancel the meeting altogether. That is actually, actually we've covered that in the. We do have the ability to have a teleconference meeting, and we can have one intentionally by teleconference, in which case no one's going to Columbia. And we already have that ability. This is to handle the, handle the case where it is an in-person meeting and someone can't make it. And I've seen the in-person meeting fail to, to reach quorum, and if you, if you had somebody on video, they're, they're really there. You know the person. They're not doing anything illegitimate. Why not count them toward quorum and conduct your business? That's my question. Otherwise, you can't conduct business. Uh, would the bylaws chair care to answer what that would do to affect the bylaws? Are you making, are you making a, are you proposing an amendment to the motion? I am proposing an amendment to the motion. What would that, that be? That, 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 that you drop the requirement that the person not be counted for four. Or, or, or we could state it, we could better stating it to say they do count for four. And so you said you changed the but not to and will count. So he, he changed I the. I think you have to change a couple other places in the bylaws. You might want to look at that. And I believe Victor has a comment as well. See how I was giving seconds? Right. Nobody was I, listening. Hang on. Has anyone seconded that right. amendment? We have a second. I can't see you guys behind this. Stand this up. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about the amendment now? Yes. Okay, well, I was going to talk a little prior to it. The problem with your idea is sometimes technology is not all that great. And people can drop out. So that happens. We don't, sometimes we won't know. It's, it's very, very much. There's, you see someone sitting behind the screen, you see them there, but because technology, they're actually frozen they there, moved, yeah. and they haven't moved for a while, now and, now. and they're technically not there anymore, so the forum is gone. Yeah. So On Facebook, you can poke people. Can we poke them that way? <laughs> uh, not this case. I'm just saying that while well, I understand your position on that, yeah. Technology is not all that great. We, we, even with teleconferencing, I had to pretty much, when I was chairman, I pretty much adjourned the meeting because everyone's 
system was fucked. It was, everything was just collapsing. Because, like, as soon as I get new one coming in, there was collapse. As soon as it you worked, know, then the them came in, mine collapsed. So, I mean, you just, you know, with technology, I just, I prefer to leave it alone. Yes. Yes, sir. <coughs> Yeah, I also would just like to speak uh, against the actual person who's video conferencing constituting the quorum. Um, I apologize. I think once that happens, where that person constitute, constitutes quorum, it's going to be more likely that people will abuse that just to not come in person to these meetings. Whereas uh, coming in person, we actually have better, more uh, beneficial discussion, I think, over the issues at hand versus lag times of displays and stuff like that. You know, if your video conference, you might not hear what's said until two seconds later or three seconds later, and something's already moved on before you're trying to chime in. So it's, it's a harder thing to accomplish uh, those serious matters that, that we need quorum for. Uh, so I think that being able to vote, yes, but being able for it to constitute quorum, I don't think so. Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, speak for uh, his uh, comment on the on use of technology. So you're against the change. I'm for the change. And for the change that uh, All right, speak. Uh, whenever the argument is made that uh, people will be less likely to show up, the people that we're talking about are all the people around us. So how many here would not show up if they would? If we would have the ability to talk on the executive committee to down for four hundred. Actually, we have less attendance in the teleconferencing. Well, I'm saying with the option to teleconference if, if there's you know, something like that. I don't think that I don't think that would be. A question about your comment. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Let's go to order. Continue. Finish up. Uh, secondarily, technology is uh, the element of technology. It's not going to be everyone all the time that's going to go in and speak periodically. And we have five people in the forum. Having a discussion isn't really appropriate. State level decisions to be made with only uh, just the bare minimum of the <laughs> what I'm saying is, I, I, I think that we should, that we should you know, uh, consider the option for having a video conference. <coughs> okay, I'm going to call time for about 30 seconds here for the following reason. Uh, since they're going to have to close that, and because of the way it sounds coming, I only heard half of what you said. I'm going to move this back. So we can get behind our screen. You would say yes to that person. Um, We're talking about executive committee members only. Yeah. This is this counts to the seven or eight people who are on the executive committee. We've already dealt with the quorum issue years ago by saying, doesn't matter how big the committee grows, quorum is five. So it's, we already have a quorum. We did have quorum issues in the past, or many times we've had that problem, as Chuck pointed out. And we addressed that by making it, fixing it. So adding Spartanburg, Georgetown, Horry County does not affect the quorum for the meeting. It stays at five. So, uh, the times I would say that I would, as chair, would be yes if, if somebody just habitually decides they don't want to drive to Columbia and they are just deciding I don't want to spend two hours in the car like everybody else, then yeah, I probably wouldn't approve it. But if they had the flu or were on military duty or they're wife was, or husband was sick and they had to stay home that day, that's an obvious reason to allow it. Uh, yes, sir. Well, going back to the reason, I'm, I am against the changes that he is suggesting, and the reason being is there's a lot, there's something to be said about an in-person meeting. The quality of the conversation better, people don't miss it. I have been unfortunate where I had to participate via VTC. I've been the person on the other room that couldn't make it. There's a lot of things that I missed because a lot of the video it skips that I had to be filled on later that in emergency situations it will do. But we don't want it to be a constant thing. We want people to be there. It encourages participation. Yes, it's a little annoying, it's a little out of the way, but there's something to be said about carpool. There are other options available. It makes it available. It, this is to grant us the ability to include someone on an emergency basis, it leaves it up to the discretion of the chairman and the secretary, and the key word there is and, so they have to be approved by both. Either one of them can say no. 
Whether it's not good enough to get quality, or this person's always, always not showing mm -hmm. up, he's not really participating, you know, that is worded with that man and not for quorum to encourage people to be there and so that we can cut it off when we need to. Yeah. Call a question. So I am, I am, I am, I am, I am against Someone's the Someone's called a question. Okay. All right. Questions been called. Any objection? No. All right. We are voting on the change to amend it to say and counts for quorum instead of does not count for quorum. All right. All those in favor of making it count for quorum signify by voting aye to the change by raising your envelope, please. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. saying you, okay. want to, you want it to count the four. Secretary, you want to get us a count? Yeah. All right, opposed? Please keep them up, guys. Well, what's the count? Well, 12. So, did pass or fail? Fail. Fail. Okay. We now return to the main motion, which is, as previously stated, and they do not count for quorum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak who well, has not spoken? Yes, sir. Um, mine is more about just a clarification on it. Uh, if you can just clarify the exact procedure that people would ask to seek the, uh, the approval of the board and the secretary. And the second point is, is there a specific limitation on the type of technology? Big difference between somebody saying, hey, I've got to take a road trip and I'm going to be on my phone while driving. Through. What I'm has driving. happened several times in the past is I'll be driving up to Columbia and get a message from somebody saying I can't make it. Maybe they had a flat tire, they're sick whatever and then we we're hunting around for who's got an iPhone we can Skype in on usually we've got two or three iPads so we've been actually usually doing it either on a Mac or an iPad and FaceTime and so the technology obviously would be would attempt to be video conference where possible failing that I could see using a phone that's why we didn't limit technology uh, yes sir Right, and the reason we've had this issue is there have been several key committee reports that people needed to give. I think I would move forward and make a provision if it did work and it wasted time. Right. Well, that's already covered. That's the way it's written. Okay. Yeah. Any other? Just, all right. We're going to vote now. Since this is the main motion and it's adopting a change to the bylaws, it has to pass by two thirds, I believe, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, all those in favor of this change to the bylaws, please signify by raising your envelope. I believe that's well over two thirds. That's for opposed to Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. That solves a huge problem that we've had. All right. Next up on the agenda, we're going to nominations. And we're going to start with our candidates for the U.S. Senate and House. And since the Senate ranking, we'll start with the Senate. Uh, our first candidate is Bill Bledsoe. What we will do is we will give 15 minutes each to the candidates. Uh, Secretary, want to do a timer on this? Oh, it's 15 minutes total. I apologize. It's five minutes. And you may use the whole thing to speak. You may use it to speak and answer questions. That is your, short, your choice, sir. Um, 
Dr. Bill Bledsoe. I'm running for U.S. Senate as a fusion candidate, so I will be on the ballot twice on, for U.S. Senate in November. I'm running in, as the Constitution Party and Libertarian Party. If either one of them throw me out, I'm thrown out of both that state law, uh, which is interesting. Um, my platform is a melding of the best of both parties. Uh, the Constitution is the highest law of the land. It is inviolate. Congress can make no laws that in any way diminish or violate the U.S. Constitution. If they do, these laws are illegal. And we must fight them. I will fight to end all the illegal laws that violated or diminished our Constitution. <coughs> I will fight with both legislation and litigation. We're going to have to fight in all areas. Examples, Congress only has the right to coin money. So I will fight the criminal banking system and its criminal virtual money system, which is allowing enemy banks to create virtual U.S. dollars out of thin air. The budget will balance itself without the criminal virtual money there to support it. I will fight for our right to property ownership. The criminal government bought up one third of the total acreage in the United States with this criminal virtual money being created out of thin air. We must return this land to each state, to the states. Unless Congress has declared war, our troops will be brought home when we end this virtual money. I will fight for our right to defend our families and to be armed at all times. I will fight for our right to believe or not to believe in God. I will fight for our right to privacy from NSA spying, which will also end when the criminal virtual money ends. I will fight to stop any seizure of property without due process. I will fight to stop warrantless searches, searches without a warrant that are being done often. I will fight to stop the illegal Victimless crime laws. They're illegal. There is no right in the Constitution to do that. I will fight to stop the illegal laws on marriage and sexual preferences. Keep the government out of our private lives. They have no room there. Overall, a lot of you guys know me and have watched me for years, and, and I've become close on Facebook with many of you. All of you that know me know for sure that this is what I've stood for my whole life. Thank you. Any questions? When is the Constitutional Party nominate its candidates? This next Saturday, this coming Saturday. They'll be in Greenville. What are you a doctor of? Yes, I'm a doctor. I'm a veterinarian. I have a question um, as, as running as a fusion candidate. Uh, how active would you be in supporting the, suppose, for example, there's a, a, a conflict where the Constitution Party is running a candidate, the Libertarian Party is running a candidate. Where, where would you candidate you would or, or a candidate from both parties, one party Constitution, one party Libertarian? Yeah, for example. It would depend on the candidate. It, it would depend on what their stand is. Uh, I, as far as I have seen, the two parties do not disagree except for in minor differences. I mean, you just saw it with what I just said, so I doubt there would be any disagreement. Uh, other questions? Yes, sir? Uh, in the U.S. Senate, what committees would you hope to be on? Uh, oh, I would love to be on Tim Scott's committee. He's on uh, <coughs> banks and banking. He is also on the financial budget. Finance. Yes. So my second question would be, um, uh, what, what, is your, uh, what is your position on executive agencies, executive, executive branch agencies, and their information? Uh, 
when you're talking about legislation that, number one, I'm against legislation that violates the U.S. Constitution. If it's not under the Constitution as a right, then, then I'm against it. If it's not there as a given right, then it needs to not be a law. We need to get it. Have you looked at the U.S. Code? It takes up a friggin' wall. And nobody's ever read it. Do you think any of these senators or presidents or, or representatives have ever read it? No way. Go ahead. Particularly, my question was about executive agencies like the FDA and the uh, FCC and all those other ones that make regulations that carry the weight of law. Okay. So, is there is there any uh, is there any part of uh, that you've ever considered using uh, uh, senator or other other uh, elements of uh, uh, legislative branch to nullify executive agency regulation? Uh, you can do that. All the regulations fall under the, the domain of the President of the United States. So as a senator, I have no control over the regulations. But you're right. If, if they overextend their rights and they try to create law, they need to be brought down to hurt. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, sir. Please, please vote and uh, pass your ballots up this way. U.S. House District 1 candidate, Michael Greer, come up. Go ahead, fold it in half and pass it up. All right. Let's wait a second. Yeah, we got all the ballots. Got two so far. Uh, three. Just hand it. I'm collecting. Please uh, fold it in half. Appreciate it. Sorry. The candidate is on the ballot unless Noda. Wins. Now, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't in any particular case today, but I do know in the past we have used NOTA. Personal judgment. Yes, it's your personal judgment. All right. All right, good afternoon. My name is Michael Greer, Jr. Uh, I'm running for the U.S. House District 1. Uh, yes. uh, Mark Sanford. Trying to get All right. Yeah. 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 Every time I've gone out and been out and about and had my button on Greer for Congress, I get asked, well, who is Greer for Congress? Well, I'm Michael Greer. And they are like, well, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? And I'm like, I'm a Libertarian Party. And everybody's like, well, at least it's against Mark Sanford. Let's get him out of here. <laughs> and, but just the other day, I had a lady tell me that she wouldn't vote for me because she's such a starch Democrat. I told her, well, that's your way of doing it. It's America. You have that right. I wanted to defend that right. That is, vote for whoever you want to. Everything. But, you know, and then my mom back there, uh, when said, you know, you got to vote for who believes your conscience, who most importantly is who you believe you should run against. And so I'm running for your BL nominee. I'm a little nervous. Um, Any questions? What, what do you believe? Yeah, what, 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 Are there any particular pet issues that <coughs> drive you, or is it uh, just your broad, nice general approach? Yeah. You got I started out in college uh, trying to get a special education degree and everything, and I do want to reform education. I do want to make it so it's a little easier for parents to get involved in their child's education. I want to try to get the politicians out of their education and let the parents and the local school boards have more say than the Department of Education. Uh, the special education laws need to be changed and make it easier because, like, my brother is autistic, and it took him, you know, a fight in Congress 
literally in Congress to get in, to go from one high school to the other, everything. So it needs to be easier for parents with special needs kids to be able to go to and choose the school they want and the parent the systems they want. So, is there a Democrat in the race? There is. Dimitri Turner. Yeah, but he is pretty much Bernie Sanders. Turnoff. Mm. <laughs> turnoff. Any other questions? No question. When, uh, when exactly did you become a libertarian? I became a libertarian earlier this year. I did because I started, I was a Republican through all things. And I started out as the uh, founder of the College of Public and College. And, and I decided, I've looked at the Republican Party and they're just towing a party line. They're not really doing anything for the people anymore. They're not of the people. They're not trying to become, they're not trying to help the people. They're just trying to be themselves and keep their party. I mean, the Libertarian Party had the exact the same beliefs I have, trying to get everything done, and they actually believe. I've been to a couple of y'all's meetings, and y'all actually seem to care. Y'all communicate, y'all talk to each other, y'all include people, y'all are trying to get the, a bigger party and actually care what the other people have to say. I've been to Republican Party meetings and they just don't care. You're just a person in the seat, a number on the table. On the table. That's all it is. Well, thank you very much. That should be an interesting campaign. By the way, I remember Mark Sanford's first campaign. I remember his first speech. You did that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that seriously. He actually, many years ago, used to like Sam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I helped get him in Congress. All right, next up, U.S. House District 6. Now, I'm going to do what most people don't do. I'm not going to insult a man by mispronouncing his last name, so I'll just say, Rich, if you can come up and introduce yourself and speak. Before, before you start with the ballot in. Oh, that's right, I apologize. Oh. Well, well, he's walking I'll stand yeah. here and kind of... Yeah, look rich. Explain the origin of your name while you're. You look pretty, you look rich. <laughs> the worst thing I could ever do is mispronounce my own name. And I actually did the whole thing. You know, the, <laughs> while we're counting this, piece of political irony here. All right, he moved down to Charleston last summer. And when he contacted me, he talked about moving. Turns out he was in the next county from me in Pennsylvania, where you came from. Bucks, and I was in Montgomery and then Delaware County. So it's a small world. Yeah. Well, actually, being in Charleston, I'm sort of in the majority. We're all escaping from the north, and, and every reason that we're libertarians are the reasons that we escape from the north. It's, um, I have, uh, <laughs> I, I've got uh, uh, my one. My younger sister pays twenty-eight thousand dollars a year in property taxes. There's a they've got the highest proper uh, the highest. Uh, one of the highest uh, personal income taxes, and on and on and on. This is New York State. Coming from Pennsylvania, we just had we just escaped from this huge gas tax uh, increase that went up to make gas. We just were up there recently, and we saw the price of gas, which is unbelievable. That was passed by a Republican governor. That thirty cent increase. So there is just it's always a constant reinforcement in our minds that there is no difference. Um, just to give a little quick background of myself, I'm here with my wife, Ellen. We moved, as uh, Stuart said, we moved down here uh, just about a year ago. I didn't set out to run this year because there's a lot going on in our personal life. I just started a new job here, but I didn't want to not have a name on the ballot. I will say up front, I'm not going to run a very active race, but I will get out there wherever I can if there's an opportunity to. Um, as far as my background in, the poli in politics, I been involved with the LP since going back to 92. I've been to the National Convention in 2000 in California, uh, actually 96. Um, 96 was in Washington, D.C., 2000 in California, and uh, Atlanta in 2004. That we went to. Um, after that, I took a little break from the LP. I actually, like a lot of libertarians did, we decided to go a different route and try to back Ron Paul. And we tried to do that in my wife and I both ran as delegates, so that was our brief, brief uh, flirtation with being Republicans to that little extent. We didn't like it very much, so we're back. We're <laughs> um, uh, I ran for Congress in 2004. I ran a, uh, what I think of as a very active race. I wish I could do that this year. I can't. I we spent uh, you know probably about 
10 to 20,000 of our own money doing that. It was fun. Um, we were out there. I ran against Charlie Dent, who was probably one of the worst of uh, the bailout uh, Republicans out there. And um, we started up a lot of trouble. And I ran in a four-way race then. And I believe I'm having a four-way race now. The last time I looked, it's a four-way race again. So that won't be anything new to me. We were in, uh, we had 11 debates that year, which was fun. Uh, I believe, was it four of them were televised? One of them was televised actually on the Philadelphia channel. It was, it was on, and it aired at like 11.30 on a, or noon or something on Sunday morning. They taped it early, but that's when they aired it. Bro. But it was still, it was just the, the point that we were able to get that libertarian message out there over and over again. Um, as far as um, the, my political knowledge, the things that I know about federal races are transferable here, and things I've kept up with as far as recent issues, but the core issues are the same. I will, I will admit up front I'm not an expert in South Carolina law, but that's not an issue in running for a federal office. So the, the issues um, that we all know, all the U.S. constitutional issues, I just, although I can't, I can't use uh, some of the tricks that I used of reminding my, my congressman that I ran against that year how he, def how he voted against PA's constitution. I won't be able to pull those little tricks, but um, well, I'll, I'll have to think of some new things that I can use uh, if I have an opportunity to uh, in this race. But I will, again, I won't be running very, a very active race, but I will be out there promoting the libertarian brand <coughs> whenever the opportunity presents itself in any kind of debate or form. And with that, I'll take any questions anybody would like to ask me. How do you say your name? Oh, I, I actually <laughs> skipped over my name. <laughs> it's Piotrowski. And there's actually a funny story with that. I found out recently, um, not recently, back when my father died, that it's actually on his birth certificate. It's spelled, it's spelled P-E-T. So I've been living a lie all my life. <laughs> uh, and my mother actually didn't know that. We found that out after he died that his name was P-T. But... Back then, government wasn't as organized as they are now, or somewhere along the line, everything was, it was written as script on his birth certificate, and somewhere it became P-I-O-T instead of P-E-T. But I am who I am. Little spelling uh, change wouldn't affect me. What's driving you? What's your main, what would you like to do? Well, if I have to say one thing in a broad sense, I'd say, make government a lot smaller than it is. That would be the single thing. I mean, we, if I have to say there's one federal issue that, that is more important than anything else, it's it's the out of control, just the over, out of control nature of our budget. I mean, that's that that's where it starts and ends. If you can't, if we don't get our budget out of control, we're, we're, we're doing it. Uh, on a personal level, uh, I, I'm gonna do everything I can to promote whoever our eventual nominee is uh, at Orlando next later this month, but I personally believe that we're going to see Hillary elected. That's my personal belief. I think I don't think I think that's where this election is going to go. Although I'm going to do everything we can to get our nominee elected, uh, but I think I think what's going to happen is I think that that if she does win, like I fear she does, is going to. I think we're going to see that in 2018 we're going to have a really really good opportunity to run some strong real strong libertarian uh, elections for Congress and win them. And that controlling the spending has to be the number one issue. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, he gave me a ballot. Somebody missing a ballot. Send in an extra one. one. Remember, Noda one. has a Canadian accent. <laughs> Some, somebody sent in an extra ballot for that guy last time. So, Rich. Oh. Someone's missing his ballot. Uh-oh. Let's see him. Okay. Over there. We can pass it over there. Are yeah. well, they collecting ballots? Collecting ballots. What? My turn? Oh, I can. Make sure we've got. Someone missing the ballot? Yes. How does this list get signed? These are the people who file for office. To be on this list, you have to file for office between March 16th and March 30th. So everybody here is a candidate because they went to their county or state election commission to file the paper. Okay, we're not allowed to add anybody. Yeah, yeah. And it's just tradition. We tend to do them from the higher offices down.
All right, we're now to the State House, and the first up, and darn it, where did I asked them for a gong for you. Uh, first, first up, we have Travis McCurry, who's seeking House District 3. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm running again. I ran for this house last time, got 16%, didn't spend a dime. I was very uh, foot in the water last time, but I looked to be a lot more active this particular time. So, did nothing, got 16%. I look forward to what I did this time. Uh, my main issues that I want to be working with this year will be education. Uh, don't mean to echo your responses, but that's the big issue that's going on in Pickup County right now. Right now, they're closing or trying to close two public schools. Uh, so I'm looking at the head and an opportunity to reach out to the voters and say, look, they're closing their schools, they're wasting their money, let's get them out of the regulation where, hey, I'll give you an example. My wife has a bachelor's degree in early childhood education. My mother-in-law, her mom, specifically has been working as a public school teacher for 40 plus years. I cannot, because of the regulation, have those two people in my private home and teach 10 kids. I can't. I can't. It's, it's, it's illegal. That is horribly horrendous education of this, or regulation that does damage to our children. It, that's what it does. To be, to be frank, it does. It gets rid of options that parents can use. And I look forward to using this as a reason, as a pusher to introduce the idea of, hey, Let's get the regulation out of it. Let's let us, let the community fix those problems that are there. Uh, that's, that's my main focus right now. I'm libertarian, been so for a couple of years now, and as far as everything else that might come up, it's pretty simple to understand that what I would, how I would vote, get government out of all your lives. Also, I would also support the uh, permitless concealed carry or constitutional carry law that's currently being standard about. Uh, that's pretty much simple. Uh, anyone have any questions? Coach, the big state issue seems like we're all hearing about is roads. What could you do about roads? Well, first of all, I'd audit the DOT. And two, I would definitely introduce an option for people in communities, especially where they are HOAs, to own their own homes, <coughs> to own their own communities. You know, provide them the option. Not force it upon them, but if they want to take it, take it upon themselves to say, hey, we locally want to claim that road for ourselves because we can sure as heck do, do a lot better job than the state DOT. And the biggest thing is, right now as it stands, all of our tax money goes towards roads and goes to Columbia. And then Columbia gets to decide which road across the state gets funded, gets fixed, gets built. I think locally, I can decide better if Norris Highway, where I live, is taken care of. I have a lot more active participation in that. I have a lot more interest in that. It would be better done locally. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Not trying to oppose you at all. Education. I can, I, can, I can imagine getting rid of the and, and uh, having people pay you got a hundred million students. Go find the, that guy in New York who, who turned every single student, poor student, uh, that he ever taught into a college graduate, just the most brilliant teachers in the world. We have those folks out there. Can imagine uh, uh, all these people spending $10 to buy a couple of things. And this guy's making millions of dollars to be a brilliant teacher. We're spending ten dollars as opposed to all the schools, the brick, the mortar, the buses, the entire government. I can't see in education. Just to shrink it down where there's almost no cost and very much in our control. Well the biggest the biggest the biggest thing is leaving the options out there. Because right now what parents have as an option is public school, private school, which is too expensive, or homeschool, which means a parent has to quit and they lose a source of income. These two, for a lot of people, are not an option for anybody. 
So they have to send their kids to public school, which is a bad option. I'm loving that. Well, the regulation prevents is that it be other options. You can have smaller classrooms, like I would suggest. I did the math about doing that. And to make up my wife's income for quitting her job, to where we can charge these 10 students, students to, to be taught by these two people, was only 100, roughly 180 to $200 a month. I think that, that, that's it. That's it. That's his, that's his, that's his, yeah, you can, have a, you can have a single homeschool parent doing online courses. There's so many other options. But the regulation prevents that would spontaneously emerge if you were just allowed. That's the focus. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, next up we have uh, Joey Lum, State House District 4. And while he's walking up here, are these all the same folks? Stay on all three. Oh my gosh. Let's see. It was 22 to nothing in every single case. So it looks like oh, Mr. Wow. Bledsoe, Mr. Greer, Mr. Spassky, you are all We're going all about it. It's not usually unanimous. No, it's not. No, it's, not. Not. it's not. It's usually one or two. We're trade regulation these vote counts. <laughs> Between them and Noda? <laughs> All right. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. Secretary, delegates, fellow candidates, friends, and neighbors, thank you. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy days and schedules to be here. I'm honored and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to speak with you and hope that I can show you how that I am passionate and committed in our quest for liberty. By way of introduction, a short story, I'd like to start with what my son Cooper told to me last night when I was putting them to bed. He was asking me, in a plethora of ways that only a three-year-old can, why I had to quote, go and speak today. I simply told him that I thought freedom was important and that I thought we could do better. He promptly told me that I was the best. Well, I may not argue that I'm the best, but I am glad that I hit this point. Maximum freedom, minimum government. That sounds like a nice place. While those four words are well-known motto to our party, it also very simply emphasizes the end goal. It all boils down to those simple words. The thoughts of free will and enterprise, self-reliance, liberty to be ourselves, are the foundations of what the party desires for our state and for our nation. We spend more money to fix fewer roads. We have higher medical expenses and go to the doctors less. Taxes are up and incomes are down, or at the very least, flat when adjusted for inflation. Our free market economy sometimes feels as if it's anything but. Companies are told what to do, who to sell to, and why. Infringement is everywhere. Maximum freedom, minimum government. Well, how do we get there? I believe the fundamental aspect that we need more of in this party is proper communication. Unfortunately, we are drowned out by the media. And a two-party system who seems to only support itself rather than their populace. But it's not all bad news. Because of this, the citizens of this great state and our nation have been begging for more. They yearn for freedom-minded individuals who rely on the Constitution and the liberty constructed there. We are that communication. We're the bridge that connects them because we are of the people, by the people. We stand for a free society in which prosperity and individual rights are paramount. Thomas Jefferson once so eloquently stated that the purpose of the Constitution is to serve as chains to bind the mischief of government. Well, I'm here to say that enough is enough. We are here to put the chains back on government and offer you a chance of freedom that only the founders intended. You know, there's a theme going around that's quite popular, make America great again. Well, I have a different idea. I believe that we are still great. I believe we always were. That's because what makes America great is not the large cities filled with great architecture, not the great plains filled with vast wonder and production capability, not her technological advances in science and medicine, or even the largest gross domestic product that the world has ever seen. What makes America great has always been her freedom of the people. You know, our Constitution is unique worldwide and that demands we the people, not the government, make the rules. The people control where and what and how America will be. And those people are looking for senators and representatives 
we will stand in their stead, demanding freedom. And I say we give them freedom. Thank you. No, so this is my first. This is my first attempt at any office. Um, like some of the others have mentioned, I was a Republican all my life. Grew up a Republican, especially in Pickens County, uh, in the state of South Carolina in general. It's very, very Republican. Um, I voted for the guy that I'm running against a couple of times. So and that's and that's probably common, right? We see that because we have no other choice. And uh, I've met with him. I've talked to him frequently and often. And I told him, when well, they have a choice this time, uh, I think. I think a lot of what we what we try to offer people is, is a way out, right? So for the most part, we say, hey, if you're not a Republican, you're a Democrat. And in our in our you know, county, especially, I mean, it's if it's not 99% Republican, I, it's, I guarantee it's close. Um, I think I think we really have to show them how we can offer freedom and independence. And Travis spoke, and I'll just get onto maybe some of those key points that some of, some of the others have asked. Travis spoke about like, constitutional carry. I can't talk to a single person in Pickens County in the F state. Obviously, everybody loves guns. I can't talk to a single person that that doesn't come up. And I'm like, man, this, this is your party. You know, we're here for you. Like, look, look what we believe. You know, look at our, look at our bylaws. Look, look at our entire belief system. And when they start seeing that, a lot of times they kind of say, well, let me ask you this question about roads. What do you think about roads? And I'm like, just like what Travis said, I'm like, well, I said, we've got a DOT that isn't audited. We've got an attorney general for the state that refuses to allow an audit to be done. When there's auditors that are like, hey, I can't do my job. I'm not allowed to audit the DOT. That's crazy. That's, it's just remarkable that we allow that to go on. So obviously we have a lot of changes to do. Uh, some of you might be wondering, hey, what can I do, right? So if I'm elected and I'm a house representative, I may not be on the best committee. I would love to be on a finance committee. That's where all the money's at. That's what controls it. Uh, we, had, we had someone earlier talk about legislation and talk about, hey, we gotta, you know, we can sue or we can, you know, stop things from happening by, by using those tactics. We have to get involved. We have to make those changes from within, even if it's on a small level. I guess I talked about it. No, but Thank I want to let you finish that because it's a good point. This is going to be an exciting call. Next up, we have District 79. Past, past Chairman, Mr. Cohen. Oh, yes, yeah, still turning your ballots. Uh, I think there's actually a couple of counting ballots, so we'll wait. I'm say I'm glad to see such a good turnout. We will be doing something interesting at the end, so don't start leaving. Is there a raffle? Who is your favorite <laughs> candidate gets through? Don't leave. Stay to the end. Hello, my name is Chris Cover. I've been a member of the South Carolina Good Libertarian Party for 16 years. I've been through a lot. Ran for against uh, Lindsey Ram in 2002 and also in 2014. Ran for state house. Actually, what got me run, started running for state house was in 2002. After 2002, I walked in to the ballot and looked down. After I voted for myself for uh, U.S. Senate, walked down, looked down, and saw there was no opposition for state house. I'm like, there's no opposition in my state in the state house for my district. What is going on? So I, I went and researched and found out that happened in 2000, 98. It just seems like it's happened every, every election cycle. So pretty much what's happening was the candidate that I had to choose from was a Democrat. So if I really want to have a decision, I had to participate in the Democratic primary. And I started finding out that we limit our choices at the general election level because there's not enough people running, running for office. A lot of people just run unopposed. So I did some more research and found out sometimes there was any opposition in primaries. And this keeps happening, keeps happening every election cycle. And then everyone wants to know why won't they listen to us? Well, because they don't have to. If you're not worried about the voter, and you don't have to worry about what the voter thinks. Now, one thing I like to—I've learned a lot uh, within the uh, local level. I went to county council meetings, and they constantly 
worried about whether they are obeying, are they doing enough to obey the mandates? Get the school board, are they doing enough to obey the mandates? And find out the mandates are coming from the General Assembly. So if you really want to do something to make an impact in the state, in local, you have to be in the General Assembly. South Carolina has the strongest General Assembly. They're, more, they're stronger than, they have more power than the governor. They select judges, they select, select Supreme Court judges, they, and they can pretty much they can, uh, veto the governor and pretty much put the uh, power into five people when it comes to the budget control board, and I know they changed that name, um, when the General Assembly is not in session. And I'm like, this is just too much. Now another thing too I've learned, I'm, I'm a transplant to, uh, to South Carolina. We have 46 counties and 85 school boards. Found out the reason behind that is through segregation. They got rid of segregation, but they, they kept the uh, structure in place. So now we have all these different government entities pretty much collecting taxes, Gaining revenue, they're not necessarily spending it all, and you just keep accumulating wealth, and people just don't quite understand how come things aren't run efficiently. Well, everyone has their little feet them and they protect them. And I hope to do, do that. And also, I've been uh, instrumental into uh, with the uh, state platform. Uh, I have other people help me with this, but I, I had a lot of control but what's in our state platform. So, Whatever our state platform is in, in you see, I was behind it, so that's, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. I believe in constitutional amendments, a lot of stuff has to be done by constitutional amendments, so the legislature can't go in and change what, um, what they want to do uh, at the time they want to, just by changing the law. If you make things as a constitutional amendment, and then you have to get the voters to approve those amendments, and that way it shows some more checks and balances for the general assembly. came up with that idea because I saw so many people run up and said, well, okay, maybe we've got too many positions out there. What we need to do is if we take 124 members of the State House and say, and the 46 members of the State Senate say, okay, now all you 170 people are going to compete for 46 seats, like Nebraska does, we might be able to get more people uh, involved. Also, if you, I feel that you eliminate some of our school, uh, consolidate our school districts, to uh, Greenville, for example, is only have one school district. Where I'm at, we have three school districts. I guess so. Our county, Lexington County has five school districts. And they're like, okay, if you, if you start control, consolidating all this stuff, you have more people run for all these people. Where are you? Nice to you. you want to nice see you. Do you want to nice see you? Do you want to nice see you? Yeah. Being a fusion candidate when you go to November, uh, so that's one way to give a, a plus yeah. for that you support that's in another party. Yeah, I think filing is actually it's going to lose him some Republican votes, but he thinks that all his friends who don't vote in primaries, who are libertarian leaning, are going to come out and vote. For him. So. Did he uh, when I talked to him, he said he wasn't sure if he'd be able to get away from work, to be able to get back there in time. So I'm, I'm assuming since he didn't get here that he wasn't able to make it that. 
but uh, I've spoken to him a couple of times, and Heath, you've communicated with him. And he's been at a couple of our meetings over the years. So, all right, let's see. Next up, so if you'll ballots. do your ballots, pass them up. Kevin asked me to speak for him. Oh, did okay. Yes. Can I ask a technical question on him running as a judicial candidate? Because I know when you're in case with the Constitutional Party, they have to get involved. How does that work when No, it's not. That's the state law. He has to win the primary. Oh, he has to win the primary. Yeah, yeah. If he wins, if he, if he gets our nomination but loses the Republican primary, he's, he's off the ballot in November. Okay. It's, just, it's the same. It's the same, same thing. It's just not primary versus convention. Yeah, there's only been one time in the history of the state when a fusion candidate has won. And that was about 30, 40 years ago. It was someone who filed as a Democrat and a Republican. <laughs> I'm serious. It's the only time. And two, three, four people. I think Atlanta might have been more than that, but it's because it was really close. I've been to conventions where it's me, Jeff, or me and Jeff and Victor, or me and Victor. <laughs> and it looks like it's a little different this time. In November, we selected an initial set of ballots, so don't hand those out yet. Um, we selected 12 delegates. Now, of those 12 delegates, I know that one delegate, the uh, Charleston County Chair, John Tisdale, is unable to attend because, unfortunately, his government job down. Oh, yes, sir. What? Well, he was the chair at the time. He is now the vice chair. Uh, he is unable to attend because uh, his government job downsized him. Now, I'm not against government downsizing, but it's unfortunate what happens to a libertarian. Uh, so we have, at the moment, based on that, three open delegate positions. Uh, and Dr. Morris, you've indicated you are, are planning on going? Okay. Okay, so we have three open spots to fill. And we can have up to 12 alternates. Now, the confusion this has been, our bylaws say that once selected, the delegation chooses any additions or changes. After a lot of deliberation, we determined that probably was after the close of this meeting, right, Mr. Carmody? Or is that your option? That I, it was your opinion that the whole body will fill those last three sp spots or the 11 that we elected as a delegation? The 11 elected by the delegation by bylaw. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody who is a delegate to the National Convention, can you real quick just uh, raise your hand? All right. So how many of them do we have here? I got one, two, three, four, five, Davis. six, seven. Eight. Well, the good thing is that's two thirds of twelve. All right, but since it's two thirds of twelve and the others aren't here, that means I, I would request that we fill out the alternate from the people from the delegates that are not going and wish to express that right now. Let's put them in the alternate list and open up the delegate. Dr. Morris, are you going? He you, said he's going. Yeah. John he's is going. not. John's questionable. Yeah. No, he's not going, so we have three to fill. Three to fill. So, so we're going to move John into the alternate category. No, he's not going. You still, well, have, you still have the option. Okay. If we have 14 other people on the alternates, we'll drop We'll drop it. Correct. Okay. So procedurally, you're saying that. The delegates we had will pick. Kind of information. Could you inform us all what the requirements are in order to be a delegate? To be a delegate, you need to be a member of the party. And in South Carolina, that requires you to be of legal age to vote, be a registered voter in the state. We have the additional requirement that you be a member of the national party and the state party, which is the same definition you've signed the pledge. So if you've signed the pledge, you are a registered voter anywhere in this state, you are eligible to be a delegate. All right, so how do you want to do this, Mr. 
And we have a question. I'm sorry. Stuart Flood, Michael Carmony, Jeff DeMint, Chuck Fields, Jordan Flatty, Richard Coher, Travis McCurry, Curtis McLaughlin, Laird Miner, David Morris, Pete Patterson, John Tisdale. Those are our 12 delegates. Yes. A little bit louder. I can't hear what word you're saying. I'm trying to get scheduled. I have some scheduling difficulties. Okay. Well, that is the reason we get alternates. Do you want to be moved to an alternate, or do you want to keep your seat? At this point, it doesn't really. At this point, it doesn't really matter because if you don't show up, an alternate gets filled in anyway. So, moving a delegate to an alternate. If we've got 50 people here that want to go, yes. Otherwise, it's it's a moot point. If you don't show, you don't show. Do you have on the spots filled, or do you need people to go to volunteer to go? We have openings. Uh, heck, we could auction these things off for a thousand bucks a piece if we wanted to. The whole country, everybody's looking for a spot. People from Idaho are applying to be members of the California party right now. I'm serious. We're one of the few states where you've got to be a resident. Okay, so um, do we start by looking for people who want to volunteer to be alternate? We, we not, well. We now have four, we're going to move him to an alternate? Okay, so four positions. we now have four positions. We, this isn't defined in our bylaws. How should we proceed? You're chairman of the delegation. Right, I know that. I meant of how we elect the others, how we proceed at this point. We've never done it this way before. No, we've always done it in a group. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I tell you what, anybody who wants to be a delegate or alternate, raise your hand if you're not already a delegate or alternate. See, it's the whole rest of the room. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. All right. How many do we have? You know, one, two, three, four. Okay. Well, we certainly have room to make everybody at least an alternate. So, I guess what we should do is get everybody's names, get them down on paper, and then what we need to do is, is have the delegation caucus briefly and decide who's going to be a delegate. Since that's the delegation, we'll caucus, we'll, we'll have our mission for a moment. Yes, sir. I saw the hand raise. I know that at least one person here does not have Right. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's get them down. You can write on there whether you want to be a delegate or an alternate. Yeah. As I said, usually this is the first time we've done it in a presidential year in a split convention, which we had to do to be able to meet state law and some other things. So this is a first for us, and it's not really defined. Very clearly, but it's, it's good enough that we were able to figure it out. So, I'll tell you what, everybody, do you, you have a form for them to fill out, or what do we yeah, have? They just give me a name. It's, it's, everybody have your hand raised, and we'll go down the list and start there. Carrie Ann Kogelman, K O G E L M A N N, delegate. So we say that again. Carrie Ann Kogelman, K O G E L N A N N. I like the delegates available. Okay. I'm assuming everybody who's told us so far is is acting a delegate. Were any of those one no, and all of them didn't say so? One. Yeah. 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 Okay, we got that one. Uh, any others? <laughs> Did you get this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how many do how many do we have? Okay, I'm, I'm showing six requests in delegate and one request in Alderman. Okay. Mr. Gold. Oh, yes, that's correct. Yes, he expressed that desire at the uh, last executive committee meeting. All right, now we have, we certainly have enough room to name everybody at least as an alternate. And so it looks like most of the people who want to be a delegate will be able to be a delegate. But 
expecting this to happen, we decided to have a little bit of a twist. A little bit of a twist is this. The vice chair is going to pass out numbered pieces of paper. You're going to get one. The numbers don't matter. We just want that so we can count them. We are going to have a straw poll. I get one too. Ah, we're going to have a straw poll. Now, unlike other straw polls around the country, this one actually has some teeth because you're going to get to pick. Now, I'm going to say this. If I see any of these ballots say vermin supreme, you're gone. You're out of the room. <laughs> Star child? No. Of the candidates currently running, you will put a name down. We will count those up. The name that is on the most number of ballots is how <coughs> our chair and vice chair are going to vote on the first round. First round. First round. We thought we'd put some teeth into it. This is presidential candidate. This is presidential candidate, which means who you pick is who I vote for. Can we hear from each other? Well, we do have one presidential candidate here who is also seeking a seat as one of our delegates. Uh, but the only way it would be fair to let He's, I believe there's a misunderstanding. Yeah. I, there's some confusion, at least myself. Are we currently voting for who we want to be delegate no. or who we want to be president? Who you want to be president? Okay, not everybody in this room can go to can go to Florida. And in order to give our state party at least the feeling of inclusion, I decided last week that we would have a straw ballot, straw poll, and the winner of that is who I will vote for in the first round. The vice chair heard about it and said he wanted to vote as well. Is there anybody, a member of the party, that have not got the paper yet? Okay. Everybody's got one. So you write the last name of one of the candidates. So like I said, Vermin Supreme. No. <laughs> he got nine votes in California. And that is that is who Travis and I will be voting for on the first round. So this is actually a straw poll with some meaning when it gets reported. We're only committed on the first round. If that candidate that wins drops out before the first round, then obviously we're uncommitted. That way, if you morons do vote for Vermin Supreme, we all have to vote for him. <laughs> Can you believe that guy's in California? Well, it is California. Depends on who he was up against. That's true. <laughs> oh, boy. I haven't voted yet. I gotta think about it. I only put myself up for this because I'm undecided. Uh, we have only up to 26. Anyway, I might vote for Vermin Supreme. Well, then you'll be out of here. That's true. I would be. All right, while they're counting that, uh, wow. Noda got a couple of votes. Uh, 22 to nothing uh, for, uh, let's see, Travis and Joey and Victor is what's written down here. You all, all of you won 22 to nothing. Will and Kevin won 21 to 1. So Noda voted for some, got a vote from somebody. Noda's alive. Noda is alive. You notice they don't give me a ballot because I'm the chair. There might have been a couple of Nodas. I, I would have definitely voted Noda. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. All right. So. No, he would have. I give him a lot of money. Actually, a lot less lately. <laughs> How do you work on that, then? Yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> now, um, everybody who's a. How do we do this? Do we wait till we adjourn to. See who the delegates are, or do we want to do that now while you guys are... All right, everybody who's a delegate, um, that's already a delegate, if you can come up to the front, please. We rarely have the call. Yes, sir.
We are too for, for, for county. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got ten of them. We've got ten of them here. Okay, good. So we have enough. Uh, the rules say that we have to buy two thirds. Does this does still two thirds of full delegation? It says two thirds of the of the full delegation. National Convention. You wrote these things. Remember? Uh, Mr. Secretary, is it two thirds or two thirds of the full delegation? Okay, uh, delegates elected to state convention came by two thirds majority, add or remove additional delegates. Okay, two thirds majority. Okay, so we need two thirds to add or renew, remove. Um, we have. So actually, technically, technically, we have to vote to change him to an alternate. Party. I assume there's no objection to changing him to an alternate. Okay, well, since you're an alternate, now you can't vote. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. We, Okay. So you want to consider candidates first? Okay. I like that notion. Okay, so which are the candidates that we have? Rich. Now we'll add the Rich Actually, I think they all have Okay, I can't, can't, can't hear what's going on, guys. We'll say Jackson, Jackson, all the All right, Let, let's start this way. Does anyone object to the Yeah. Does anyone object? Okay, all right, then they're, then they're both delegates. And that's which ones? Okay, so there's no objection to that. We now have two available. Two available. And we have, how, what are the names we have now? Okay, so Michael Rhodes is here. Yeah, he's the, he's the new head of the student shop at USC, isn't he? No. No, he isn't. It's somebody else. Michael Ferguson. Did we get the wrong name? Was he African American or was he wider around? Yeah, you've got the right name. He's in the organization, he's in the leadership, he's not the president. Right, right. He's the one organizing what we can't leave the other one. Okay. All right. He is he did. So he's, but he's active. He's active. He's active for the last yes. three years. He's absolutely okay. active. So I'll make a motion to put him as a delegate. All right. Do you have any objection? All right. That's Rose. Flowers. Rose. Okay. Uh, among them as well as I will speak on the so 
Yeah, yeah. Anybody who doesn't, who, I think I just remember what happened. In, in well, we need to make a motion for that, but I think it would be an appropriate motion for it. We don't. Because the month of Las Vegas, they had a lot of people said they were born and only two people showed Yeah, so, yeah. Mean, two of us. Yeah, we were the delegation. Alright. Does anyone make any motion? I second that motion. Alright. Any objection? Alright. I make a motion for the rest of the next few lists as open. Second. Any objection? Okay. All right. All right. So we would you like to report to that? Yeah. 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 You know, I think that's the first time our delegations ever had the caucus. Yeah. In 40 years. Good sign, guys. All right. The. Oh, yeah, but then we had to throw them out. Denver don't count, man. Denver doesn't count. Okay. Mr. Potowski, Ms. Blickman. Mr. Rose and Mr. Robinson, your delegates. Everybody else who applied is an alternate. Yay. Now, <laughs> all right. now, the way our rules go, only the original delegate, if, if, if somebody drops out, fails to show up, um, uh, we have a proposal to add anybody from the outside. The original delegates away from the convention, which does not include the four of you, are the ones who vote on adding or removing. That's just the way the bylaws were written. And the reason for that was to prevent us showing up with two people, adding two more people, and becoming another, another organ and getting kicked out of our own state party. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to propose uh, while we have everybody here, if there's anybody who has been added to a delegate or who is an existing delegate, if something happens that you can't go for whatever reason, please just let the county chair or somebody know or, or Stuart through Slack or whatever so that we can get in touch with the alternates and find out who really I'm assuming all of you have, you have smartphones. Okay, all of you are delegates, please see either myself or the vice chair because we have a slack team for the delegation because if we have a vote on the floor we need you for your phone is going to go off you're going to hear about it because we're not going to have people wandering off to disneyland all right do we have the uh, results for me to uh where you want the straw poll at the very bottom straw poll is the very bottom yeah, but I thought I thought he was climbing a mountain. Are you sure he's he's not climbing a mountain? He's going to be there. <laughs> okay. Well, with 12 votes, Johnson is who we vote for. Mr. Peterson had 10 votes. Mr. Robinson had three, and somebody in the room voted for Feldman. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. That's why I fired. Wow. I hadn't seen anyone supporting Feldman since he dropped out of the race. <laughs> he dropped out of the race, didn't he? You don't know? Oh, he didn't. He just dropped out. I think McAfee just dropped out. Really? I remember. That was a rumor going on. I can't tell you the exact wording, but it's something to do with some carnal knowledge of whales being preferable to debating again. <laughs> yes, something with carnal knowledge involved. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other business we have to do? Yeah. Uh, one note before you adjourn, it's a special election coming up, District 100 in Berkeley County. Berkeley County. You have an election coming up down there, District 100, special election. Run across any candidates. 
And we have to reconvene and nominate them if anyone files, right? All right, so I may have to bring us back to Columbia, but the food's good. Is there any other business in the form of motion? Any other information we need to know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll walk you through it. I am hosting a presidential event next Friday in Spartanburg. About a third of the presidential candidates will be flying into Spartanburg to stand in unison behind an economic policy. We'll have world-class entertainment by Galen Griffin, who wrote songs for Luke Bryan and, uh, and uh, others. And so I hope it's free. It's open to, to uh, it's probably reached um, a couple hundred thousand people in our area to come to a libertarian event. I'd like to welcome all of you to come. We light hors d'oeuvres, start about seven, for about an hour, and then the event will begin. Which other candidates are coming? Uh, well, I'm, 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 not everybody's confirmed completely, but Rhett Smith is coming. Um, looks like Brian Briggs is coming. Shauna Sterling is coming. Uh, Thomas uh, Clement may be coming. Marcia Garcia from Texas. Uh, I'll be there. And there may be, and there may be more, and I may be forgetting. And, and there will be some foil candidates, I think, that will be there. And so we'll make it. Right. Yes. Is there a way to share that event? Um, I have. We're we're trying to put it on all the Facebooks, our own, uh, the state. We have radio ads out. We have some print ads out, and we'll do all we can to get the information to you. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for anybody in the upstate, the two candidates upstairs in the upstate is uh, myself and Joey. We're fishing now. Thank you, guys. There will be a uh, candidate forum in Easley, South Carolina, where me and him both will be at, along with other Republican candidates. If you're in the upstate and want to show support, please show up. It will be this Monday, the 9th, at 7 o'clock. There is a Facebook event. It's already been shared on the page. All you have to do is go look it up. Please come and show support. All right. No other business. We have anything else, Mr. Secretary? All right, we're going to recess. Yeah. We may be. Uh, just like you said, for the upstate, uh, for the way down for the state, uh, I'm going to first meet for the Thank y'all for the nomination. Uh, in Somerville, uh, Tuesday. Sorry, on Tuesday in Somerville, South Carolina, we have my first meet for you on Main Street in Somerville, uh, 5 to 7. So, 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 we're, we're pushing voters' registration. Trying to get people to register to vote and join the Libertarian Party. So we're going to be doing that. Right. We stand adjourned, subject to recall by the chair. Rich, I need to get your three hours email. It's easy, it's our hands. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Bye, Sam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel any to me? No. No. Uh, uh, so I, I do have one thing, though, before we get all out of here. Have you seen the amount of inquiries that have come in the last two weeks? I've been trying to answer them. I'm getting snowed. Yeah, I'll tell you what. How about if um, we do... We do two things. Let's get all the delegates together for a minute, and then how about if we we just I don't know, what do we do about this? I mean, I've been snowed I mean, too, I'm, and I've seen like I mean, we get like four or five a day. I know, and I know. It, it's been a, was it we're press, getting phone calls. We used to we used to get one phone call a quarter. All right, and we're getting two a day now. Hand them to me, and I'll hand them to the And you know, when you're little, you're you want to call a little bit. Stop okay. five minutes, and I'll send them to the. the Hey, yeah. You know how I distribute my yeah.